Chapter 3. Decision-Making Techniques In the next five chapters, you will practice the five mental projection exercises that will introduce you to the subjective dimension. Meanwhile, please continue to practice your alpha exercise as we instructed you to in Chapter 2 to make sure that you will be at the alpha level when you practice the mental projection exercises. When you feel relaxed physically and mentally, you are doing it correctly. When you feel relaxed and energized at the completion of your alpha exercises, you know you are entering the alpha level. You cannot feel alpha, but relaxation creates the environment where your brain will produce the alpha brainwave that we desire. To help you learn to actually use the alpha level, I will give you some techniques that you can use at alpha to help you in your business career as well as in your personal life. You can use these techniques immediately, even while you are doing the five mental projection drills to develop your ESP. It's easy to measure the results you achieve by using the alpha level. You take action and notice the results that you get. Jose Silva often emphasized the importance of taking action. The whole course is based on taking action. That's why we urge students in class not to just sit passively as their instructor reads the conditioning cycle to them, but to actually follow the instructions and do what the instructor tells them to do. That's why doing it on your own can be more valuable to you. As a business person, you recognize, just as Jose Silva did, the importance of actually doing what is necessary to ensure that you get the results you want. You can remain relaxed so that you stay in the alpha level. Also, follow the simple instructions about how to use your mind. Correct Attitude Successful businesses provide products and services that have value to people. Henry Ford put a car in every garage. Bill Gates helped find a way to put a computer in every home. Steve Jobs took it even further and put a computer in everybody's hand. As consumers, we're happy to give money to people who provide us with benefits and advantages that we desire. This concept extends beyond life here on planet Earth. If you want to obtain guidance and help from higher intelligence, which you will learn to do in Chapter 6, you need to do what higher intelligence sent us here to do, which is to solve problems and improve living conditions here on Earth. It turns out that the golden rule is good business. To help us do our best, Jose Silva created the Laws of Programming the laws of programming. Before I give you the specific problem-solving techniques that you can use at the powerful alpha level, I need to advise you that this level is not to be used to cheat other people and take advantage of them. Jose Silva always told us that we should not gain at somebody else's loss. We should gain while helping the other person to also gain. To guide us in doing that, he included five laws of programming in the Ultramind ESP system. Laws are fixed, laid down. They are not optional. Laws don't break. If you jump off the roof, the law of gravity won't break, but you will. If you're not achieving the success you feel you should be achieving, then review the laws of programming and make sure you are complying with them. Here they are. 1. Do to others only what you like to have others do to you. 2. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. 3. The solution must be the best for everybody concerned. 4. The solution must help at least two or more persons. And 5. The solution must be within the area of possibility. Clemen Mihalich, the business owner you met in Chapter 1, had this to say about the value of the laws of programming in an email he sent to us in January 2008. He wrote, Do you remember when you told me, I am not the only one who is programming for business? Most businesses want more business, but not all of them pay as much attention to whether they are giving their customers as much value as possible. Ever since you told me that, I have kept in mind the five laws of programming, and I must tell you that the laws of programming are all you need in the beta world. From the time I took the old course many years ago, I have programmed a lot to successfully run my business. But nothing works better 
than the five laws of programming. So I am happy that Jose Silva decided to include them in the Ultramind ESP system. Be honest and do good work for others, and you will profit. It simply works. More information at Alpha. As you know, the 10 CPS alpha frequency is at the center of the normal brainwave frequency range, which runs from 0.5 CPS, delta, to 20 CPS, beta. It's located at the midbrain area, the center of the brain. The center is the ideal place to be in order to access as much information as possible from all parts of the brain. That's one reason that the alpha level is the ideal level for analyzing problems and using your lifetime of experience to find the best solution. Here's an example from our own business. One of our affiliates had built a website to sell the Silva Ultramind ESP System Complete Home Seminar. Sales were good, but we were getting too many returns. We entered the alpha level and mentally scanned the website, and immediately were attracted to the main headline, which read, Develop ESP in two days, guaranteed, or your money back. We had been using that headline very successfully for our two-day seminars, and that was where the affiliate had seen it. It was fine for a two-day seminar, but not so good for a home study course. Very few people will sit down and listen to 17 hours of recordings in two days. One of the advantages of the home seminar is that you can take it at your convenience, at your own pace. We suggested that he change the headline to read, Develop ESP in as little as two weeks, guaranteed, or your money back. Once we changed the headline to give people a more realistic idea of how long it would take to get results, returns dropped dramatically. This truly conforms to the laws of programming. It was the best thing for everybody concerned. More people learned and benefited from the Ultramind ESP system. They learned techniques to help their loved ones and anyone who needed help. And we made more sales and earned more money. It's a false choice to think that when one person gains, somebody else has to lose. Jose Silva said that we should gain while helping the other person to gain as well. You can use your mind to detect where the objective reality fails to conform to the subjective blueprint of perfection, so that you can then correct the abnormality and everybody gains. Help for decision-making. Your success in business may be determined by the decisions you make. Your judgment is being tested. This is not the first time. You have made many good decisions. You have been right more often than wrong in the past, and that is probably why you are where you are in your business career. Now you have ways to use more of your mind, more of your decision-making capabilities, more of your latent genius ability, to be right even more often. There is more information available at alpha than at beta, and alpha is the strongest part of the brain, so it is the ideal level to use to analyze problems and decide how to correct them. In addition to that, here are a couple of very powerful decision-making techniques. 1. You can use Jose Silva's elimination technique, which we'll talk about in a moment, to help you make the right choice when you have several options. And two, you can use Silva Ultramind's mental video technique, which you will learn in chapter six, to help you choose the best option and also give you guidance when you don't know what to do next. The Elimination Technique. With the Elimination Technique, also called the Alternate Choice Technique, you compare two of the available choices at a time. It is much like a single elimination sports tournament where teams play each other and the loser is eliminated while the winner moves on. Let's say you have an opportunity to make a sizable sale to a new company. You have three star salespeople to choose from. You must select the one best for this critical sale. You review the matter objectively. Then you go to your center, the alpha level. At your center, you pose the question, who is better, salesperson A or salesperson B? Then, clear your mind for a moment by thinking of something entirely different. You want to disconnect from the asking mode and reconnect in the receiving mode. When you return to the question to get the answer, 
your first impression is usually the strongest and the correct one. After you have eliminated one of the two choices, compare the one you chose with another option. If you feel that salesperson A is the better one for the job, then your next step is to compare salesperson A with salesperson C. Once again, choose one and eliminate the other. You can use this method for small decisions at first. See how clairvoyant decisions work for you in using this person instead of that person, in using this color instead of that color, this equipment instead of that equipment. As your skill improves and your confidence grows, you can graduate to the important situations that can bring you big savings in time. For instance, you can be doing some routine tasks where a certain amount of good judgment is needed. You have done these tasks satisfactorily many times before the Silva training, but now, with the Silva techniques, you can do them even better. You can use the elimination method at Alpha in the following. Pricing products. Setting manufacturing runs. Determining discounts to be allowed. Evaluating credit limits. Establishing budgets. Hiring the best employees. Ordering raw materials. Establishing inventory levels. Effective advertising and marketing. Negotiating. And finally, crisis management. The result will be a fine-tuning of your judgment. Routine matters, instead of being handled in a routine way, will enjoy the same superior touch as more important matters. Furthermore, routine matters occur more frequently, so the small increment of advantage you gain adds up rapidly. You begin to see it in the profit and loss statement. This technique can yield the following. Better words and phrases in a letter or ad, the proper order of procedure in written material or activities, the diplomatic approach in conversation, the right area for a sales test, and the best person to do a job. Suppose you're comparing two suppliers, one who offers compensation if you have less than 99% uptime versus another supplier who guarantees 98% uptime. Would you pay 50% more to gain an extra 1% uptime? It doesn't sound like a very good deal from a left-brain perspective. During your analysis at Alpha, you might look at it from another angle and realize that you will have twice as much downtime before receiving compensation if you opt for the 98% uptime guarantee. Compare prices on that basis, and you may decide that paying 50% more for a guarantee of 100% more uptime might be the better deal. There are many other situations where the alpha level can help you make the best decisions. For example, you're making a major purchase and several suppliers are competing. Compare them on these bases. 1. Innovative new company versus trusted established company. 2. Lower purchase price versus lower price for service contract. 3. Cost of additional features versus savings and increased productivity. 4. Hiring the best employees. 5. Establishing budgets. 6. Ordering raw materials. 7. Setting manufacturing runs. 8. Establishing inventory levels. 9. Setting prices. 10. Determining discounts to be allowed. 11. Evaluating credit limits. 12. Effective advertising and marketing. 13. Negotiating. And 14. Crisis Management. Chris Downs, a retired British police officer who wrote the foreword to this book, used the alternate choice technique to make an important buying decision in his personal life. He told us, I was buying a new car and had narrowed it down to one of two choices. I came up with my own variation of the alternate choice technique. I visualized both cars and imagined them both being driven inside a garage and the door closing. Then I cleared my mind by thinking of something else I needed to do, and when I came back for the answer, I imagined the garage door opening and one of the cars coming out. But I didn't call and order it right away. Within 30 minutes, one of the car dealerships telephoned me to say there was a problem on the construction line and the car would not be available until sometime in September. That confirmed what the technique had indicated about which one to buy. I am sure it helps that I have been practicing the distant healing 
that we learned in the last part of the Silva Ultramind ESP system and also using the mental video for guidance from higher intelligence. How to develop your ESP and use it reliably. These days it seems as if there are apps for everything. Tap a button or an icon and somebody will bring you a pizza or give you a ride or play your favorite music or show you the latest movie or even read you a book. But there are some things that only a human being can do. Only a human being can fall in love. A computer app can't do it for you. Intuition is also something that only a living being can do. For centuries, people have tried to understand and explain ESP, psychic ability. Some people thought it was some kind of mysterious extra sense that only a few lucky people had. That's why they called it extrasensory perception. In a way, they were right, because, as we have seen, only a few lucky people, about 10% of humanity, have learned how to use this ability. There are many other ideas about psychic ability. Jose Silva sorted through all of them during his 22 years of scientific research. He put all of them to the test. He discovered that ESP is not an extra sense, but a prior sense, something we are all born with, but which only one person in ten is able to use after they mature. Mr. Silva's greatest discovery is how easy it is for all of us, everybody, to develop this ability. He discovered that it's not something extra, and we don't have to sit and hope that it comes to us. That is why he changed the meaning of ESP to effective sensory projection. You can project your mind to detect any information anywhere it exists. We're going to do something now that we have never done before. We will open the vault and show you exactly what Jose Silva discovered about how to develop your own natural, God-given intuition within one week or less. You've already learned the first step, how to enter and function at the alpha brainwave level. Now, I will show you the second step, how to learn to decide and understand the subjective or mental or psychic information just as your smartphone decodes digital information. How Psychic Ability Works Effective sensory projection is a lot like your smartphone. When we talk on the phone, you hear my voice and I hear your voice. But you don't hear my actual voice, and I don't hear your actual voice. My phone converts my voice into computer code and then transmits it through an electronic signal to your phone. Your phone decodes the data sent to it by my phone and converts it back into sound waves that resemble my voice. We each hear a representation of the other person's voice created by our phone from the information that the other phone sent. The same thing happens when you use video messaging. What you see on your screen is an image of the person that your smartphone reconstructed from the digital code that was sent from their phone. You see a reproduction of my face that is created by the app on your phone, and I see a likeness of your face that the app on my phone creates. ESP works the same way. Your mind detects psychic information and apps in your brain will decode the information and convert it to a physical representation. Your brain's clairvoyant app will give you a mental picture. Your clairaudient app will provide a reproduction of sounds, and your clairsentient app affects your physical body directly. Nobody else is doing it. Your mind detects the subjective or psychic information, and your brain decodes it and converts it to a form that you can understand. But there is one big difference between a smartphone and your brain. Using your smartphone to communicate and send information back and forth requires that both parties participate. Not so with your mind. You can project your mind to any location and detect information if it is needed to solve a problem and improve living conditions on the planet. If another person is at the alpha level and is projecting a mental image to you, then it's easy for you to detect it while at your alpha level. If they are not projecting a mental image to you, then you may need to create an image with your own mind. It might not happen automatically, 
You might have to take action mentally and create a mental image, or perhaps several mental images, until you find the correct one. You can also imagine what someone would say to you and what they might feel like. This is how you can detect accurate information when nobody is transmitting it to you. Take the first step to develop your ESP. Now we'll take the first step in developing your own natural God-given intuition, which you can do in just a few days' time. In order for you to become familiar with the subjective or mental dimension, we want you to enter the alpha level and go over what you already know, what you have experienced, to review what you have impressed on your brain neurons with your objective or physical senses. What are you already familiar with in your everyday life? You are familiar with your own home. When you walk into a room, you know immediately which room it is and how it is furnished, because you have been there before. There are many distinguishing details that you can refer to so that you know whether you are in the living room or the dining room or the master bedroom. These details are called points of reference. Points of reference. Points of reference are details that help you to recognize and understand something. That's what you do whenever you learn something new, like learning to read a balance sheet. In order to recognize and understand a balance sheet, you first need to know what assets, liabilities, and equity accounts are. Then, when you see them laid out in a certain way, you will know that you are looking at a balance sheet. The more experience you have with balance sheets, the faster you will be able to use one to determine the financial health of a business. A balance sheet lays out the ending balances in a company's asset, liability, and equity accounts as of the date stated on the report. The most common use of the balance sheet is as the basis for ratio analysis to determine the liquidity of a business. Liquidity is essentially the ability to pay one's debts in a timely manner. The balance sheet is a key element in the financial statements. Other documents are the income statement and the statement of cash flows. A statement of retained earnings may sometimes be attached. The format of the balance sheet is not mandated by accounting standards, but rather by customary usage. The two most common formats are the vertical balance sheet, where all line items are presented down the left side of the page, and the horizontal balance sheet, where asset line items are listed down the first column, and liabilities and equity line items are listed in a later column. The vertical format is easier to use when information is being presented for multiple periods. All of these details can be seen as points of reference for understanding a balance sheet. In order to learn to function in the subjective dimension, just as easily as you function now in the objective physical dimension, you need to start collecting experiences and finding distinguishing details in the subjective dimension that you can refer to. Here is what Jose Silva discovered about how to do that. Beginning to explore the subjective dimension. First, we'll take your objective experiences to the subjective alpha level and we'll review them at that level. We will go over and review the experiences and memories that you have accumulated in your brain. Then, we will ask you to do something with your mind that you cannot do with your body. In this way, you will establish subjective impressions with your mind. You can do that when you are at 10 cycles per second alpha. We call this mental projection. For instance, you know what your living room looks like physically, so in order to experience it mentally, you will project your mind into the material that the wall is made of. You cannot do this physically, so you must use your mind to do it mentally. In this next exercise, here is what we want you to do. The first thing you will do in this next conditioning cycle is to project yourself mentally to be standing in front of your home, standing about 30 feet or 10 meters from it. Then, Ed will guide you to study the front of your home, studying details and noticing colors. Then, you will mentally enter your home and go into your living room and stand at the center, facing the south wall. To help you determine which is the south wall when you are facing south, the sunrise is on your left and the sunset is on your right. Then you will study the wall as you did the front of your home, and study everything that attracts you, 
pictures, curtains, and furniture. Especially concentrate on objects that contain color. After reviewing your memories while at the alpha level, Ed will ask you to do something you have never done before, to project yourself mentally into your living room south wall. Use your imagination for this. He will guide you to test for light, temperature, odor, and solidity of material. Then you will come back out of the wall and examine some objects, including a chair and some common foods. Time in the subjective dimension. If you're wondering why we use the south wall, it's because when we face south mentally, we can move forwards and backwards in time. It doesn't matter which way you face physically. It's as if you have moved out of the physical dimension into the mental dimension. And now you are looking back mentally at the physical dimension. In the physical dimension, the past is behind you. The present is where you are and the future is in front of you. In the mental dimension, the past is to your right, the present is directly in front of you, and the future is to your left. This exercise is about 40 minutes long. Now, here is Ed to guide you through it. This is the projection to home exercise of Jose Silva's Ultramind ESP system. Now prepare for the projection to home exercise by finding a comfortable position. We will start this exercise with the three to one method. Take a deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number three, three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I'm going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your throat. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest, externally and internally. Relax your abdominal area, externally and internally. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now, and more so every time you practice. To enter mental relaxation level two, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times, and you are at level two. Level two is for mental relaxation where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To improve mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes.
to go to your center. Take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I'm going to count from ten to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Ten, nine, feel going deeper, eight, seven, six. Deeper and deeper. Five, four, three. Deeper and deeper. Two, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. The following laws are to be considered when programming. Do to others only what you like others to do to you. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. The solution must be the best for everybody concerned. The solution must help at least two or more persons. The solution must be within the possibility area. The following principles apply to programming. Objective physical communication takes place at the beta left brain dimension using the objective physical senses. The hearing is used for perception and the voice is used for transmission. Subjective spiritual communication takes place at the alpha right brain dimension by using the spiritual senses. Visualization is used for perception and imagination is used for transmission. In the objective physical dimension, the past is behind us, the present is our present position, and the future is ahead of us. In the subjective spiritual dimension, the past is to your right, the present is centered straight ahead, and the future is to your left. We will now impress new information for your benefit, the mental screen. To locate your mental screen, begin with your eyes closed, turn slightly upward from the horizontal plane of sight at an angle of approximately 20 degrees. The area that you perceive with your mind is your mental screen. Without using your eyelids as screens, sense your mental screen to be out away from your body. To improve the use of your mental screen, project images or mental pictures onto the screen, especially images having color. Concentrate on mentally sensing and visualizing true color. We will now program effective sensory projection for your success. We will program information through the use of mental projection. We will establish subjective points of reference at the imaginative dimension, the subjective dimension at different levels and depths. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers. At that time, you will imagine yourself to be standing about 30 feet in front of your home. You will study the outer appearance of your home, scanning the scene. You will start at the top left of the scene and go from left to right, just as you do when reading a page of a book. You will then go to the left side of the scene again, but a little lower than before, and again go from left to right. You will continue going a little lower each time until you reach the ground level. I will now count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers so that you may imagine projecting yourself to the front of your home. One, 
two, three. Project yourself mentally to the front of your home, standing about 30 feet from it. Begin scanning the scene at the upper left-hand corner, going slowly from left to right. Lower each time until you reach the ground level. You will go slowly and stop to study anything that attracts your intelligence while scanning, such as the roof, windows, window frames, doors. Study anything that attracts you. Begin by studying the roof of your home. What material is it made of? What color is it? Continue studying everything that attracts you until you reach the ground level. Concentrate on colors. Take your time. Study colors. Take your time. Study colors. Scan the ground level. Now focus your attention on the front door and concentrate on the doorknob or handle. Mentally move close to the door, close enough to touch the door handle. Expect the door to appear to increase in size as you get closer. Mentally touch the doorknob or handle, open the door, and mentally enter your home, closing the door behind you. Mentally walk toward your living room. Once you have entered your living room, stand at the center, facing the south wall. You have been here before. You have been here during daylight hours, and you've been here during nighttime, with the lights turned on and with the lights turned off. I'm going to count from one to three. At the count of three, it will be daytime. One, two, three. It is now daytime. You are standing at the center of your living room, facing the south wall. You have been here before. You know how much light enters the room during the day, and you recognize what is in front of you, what is behind you. You know what is to your left, and what is to your right. At the count of three, we will change the scene to nighttime with the house lights turned on. One, two, three. The scene has changed to nighttime, and you are still standing in the middle of your living room facing the south wall. You have been here before. You know what is in front of you, what is behind you, what is to your left, and what is to your right. At the count of three, the lights will go out. One, two, three. The lights are out, and you are standing in darkness facing the south wall. Although the living room looks dark, you still know what is in front of you, what is behind you, what is to your left, and 
what is to your right. At this time, concentrate on the wall before you, the south wall. You can sense it being a certain distance away, and you know what is on this wall. You also know the color of this wall. Use your memory, your knowing, your sensing to make a study of your south wall. Scan this wall as you did the front of your home, beginning at the upper left corner and going from left to right, a little lower each time until you reach the floor level. Study everything that attracts you, pictures, curtains, and furniture. Especially concentrate on objects that contain color. Take your time. Study colors. Take your time. Study colors. Take your time. Now mentally walk toward the south wall and stand close enough to touch it. At the count of three, you will objectively raise your hand to touch the wall. One, two, three. Objectively stretch out your arm. Raise your hand, and with the palm of your hand, touch the wall. Use your imagination to sense the wall as being smooth or rough, as cold or warm, whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension you can use as a point of reference in the future. Subjectively observe and study the wall from a few inches away. Study the material, the color, whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, you will imagine projecting yourself subjectively within the wall. One, two, three. You are now within the wall. You may return your hand to rest on your lap. At this time, we will conduct four tests subjectively. First, we will test for light, intensity, and color. Our second test is for temperature. The third test is for odor and the fourth for solidity of material by reflected sound. At the count of three, we will test for light, its intensity and color. One, two, three. Subjectively test for light, intensity and color. How much light do you sense? What color do you sense? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, test for temperature. One, two, three. Subjectively test for temperature. Is there a difference in temperature between the inside and the outside of the wall? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, test for odor. One, two, three. Subjectively test for odor.
Is there a difference in odor between the inside and the outside of the wall? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, test for solidity of material by knocking on the inside of the wall. One, two, three. Objectively form a fist and knock on the inside of the subjective wall. Objectively go through the motions as you do when you knock on a door. What kind of sound would you expect to hear reflected back to you? How solid would you judge the material to be? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, you will come out of the wall and be just a few inches away from it. One, two, three. You are out of the wall just a few inches away. Now at the count of three, you will be at arm's length. One, two, three. You are now at arm's length. At the count of three, you will be at the center of your living room, facing the south wall. One, two, three. You are now at the center of your living room, facing the south wall. You know the color of your south wall. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to black. One, two, three. The color of the wall is now black. You can get a true black color by imagining a painter with a can of black paint and a brush in his hand, painting the wall black and about to finish painting it. Your south wall is now all black. At the count of three, it will be red. One, two, three. It is now red. To get a true red color, again, imagine a painter about to finish painting it red. At the count of three, the wall will be green. One, two, three. The wall is now green. Imagine it green. At the count of three, the wall will be blue. One, two, three. The wall is now blue. Imagine it blue. At the count of three, the wall will be violet. One, two, three. The wall is now violet. Imagine it violet. We will now change the color back to blue, back to green, back to red, back to black. We will now mentally examine a chair, selecting any chair we wish. Mentally push it against the black wall. From your position in the center of the living room facing the south wall, mentally lift the chair about 20 degrees above the horizontal plane of sight in the area of your mental screen. We will examine the chair, studying its material, the upholstery, if it is upholstered, and how it is attached to the chair, and the color of the chair. Now mentally turn the chair toward your left. Now away from you. Now toward the right. Now facing you. 
whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to its actual color. One, two, three. The wall is now its actual color. Again, study the chair. How does it stand out against this background? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to red. One, two, three. The wall is now red. Study the chair. How does it stand out against a red background? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to green. One, two, three. The wall is now green. Study the chair. How does it stand out against a green background? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to blue. One, two, three. The wall is now blue. Study the chair. How does it stand out against a blue background? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. The color of the wall will now change back to green, back to red, back to the natural color, back to black. At the count of three, the chair will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The chair has disappeared from the scene. The wall is now black. At the count of three, we will mentally bring into the scene a watermelon. It will be up against the wall at the height where we had the chair. One, two, three. Study this watermelon. Use your knowing, your memory, your sensing. Above all, use your imagination to study the watermelon. Observe how the green stands out against the black background. At the count of three, the watermelon will be cut in half. One, two, three. The watermelon is now cut in half, and you can visualize how the red portion of the watermelon, lined with black seeds, stands out against the white inner rind and the green of the outside. As you mentally bring the two halves slowly toward you, notice how they appear to increase in size. Examine the various colors, the red, the white, the black, and the green from only a few inches away. Now imagine the odor and taste of watermelon. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the watermelon will be near the wall. One, two, three. The watermelon is now near the wall. At the count of three, the two halves will come together. One, two, three. Now at the count of three, the watermelon will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The watermelon has disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, a lemon will appear at the same level near the wall. One, two, three. A lemon appears in a fluorescent yellow color that stands out against the black wall. Bring the lemon closer to you noticing how it appears to increase in size as it approaches. 
Stop the approaching lemon when it's only a few inches away and examine its color. Now imagine the odor and taste of a lemon. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the lemon will be near the wall. One, two, three. The lemon is now near the wall, a little higher than the horizontal level of sight. At the count of three, the lemon will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The lemon has disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, an orange will appear. One, two, three. An orange has appeared on the scene. Observe the color at a distance. Now bring the orange closer and again observe the color. Now imagine the odor and taste of an orange. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the orange will be near the wall. One, two, three. The orange is now near the wall. At the count of three, the orange will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. Three. The orange has disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, three bananas will appear. One, two, three. Three bananas have appeared. Study the color from far and near. Now imagine the odor and taste of bananas. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the bananas will be near the wall. One, two, three. Now at the count of three, the bananas will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The bananas have disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, three carrots will appear. One, two, three. Three carrots have appeared. Study the color from far and near. Now imagine the odor and taste of carrots. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the carrots will be near the wall. One, two, three. Now at the count of three, the carrots will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The carrots have disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, a fresh and crisp head of lettuce will appear. One, two, three. A head of lettuce has appeared. Study the color from far. Now bring it closer and study the color from a distance of about 12 inches. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the head of lettuce will be near the wall. One, two, three. Now at the count of three, the head of lettuce will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The head of lettuce has disappeared from the scene. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as points of reference in the future. It is now an accomplished fact 
that subjective points of reference have been established at the imaginative dimension, at the subjective dimension, at different levels and different depths. To function at these levels and to use these points of reference, all you need is to have a sincere desire to solve problems. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind and at these points of reference, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help your loved ones physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind or these points of reference to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind, nor will you be able to use these points of reference. You will always use these levels of the mind and these points of reference in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when we move on, we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. You will have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache. No ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears. No ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of mind. One. Two. Coming out slowly now. Three. At the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy, wonderful sleep. Four, five, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. This concludes the Projection to Home exercise for Jose Silva's Ultramind ESP system. Thank you. Thank you.